you learn in two ways in life you either learn by experience or you learn by revelation uh experience might cost you your life your time <laughs> many resources um money is an exchange of value and i know most people say that they are rich means they are focusing on how much money they have in their account so he's saying money is an exchange of value and the true wealth is a traditional way of handling family finances so stressful and it stresses marriages out right yeah uh, you need to start with defining how you think you know it goes back to self images at first right the bible says as a man thinketh in his heart so he is mm. so if you think you're poor that would be your reality um in a situation whereby a man is driven by ego and he just wants to like be in charge of everything because god has given you the grace yes that's cool but we actually started planning financially together while we were still dating It's 45 minutes on the clock, and this is Mindset to Work Podcast. I'm your host, the Fisayo, and welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on what time you're listening to this right now or watching right now on YouTube. Um, I have to think my husband is a very special guest and is the very first guest of this podcast. Oh, let's go. So it's a honor to have you here. Thank you Thank for you. saying yes to joining us. Thank you. Now, you might wonder why. My husband is here. Um, the focus of today's episode is couple finance. This is mindset to wealth. On this podcast, we're going to be focusing on how you can grow your wealth, how you can acquire wealth, and how you can have the right mindset to get that. Mm. Because without the right mindset, to be honest, whatever it is you acquire is going to be for nothing because it's, it will take a little time for you to lose it all. And because of that, I want to have different topics for different episodes to this topic is couple finance mm, so that's interesting yes yeah let's get into it um do you have anything to say to the guest before we start um um just wanted to say thank you guys for the ones that have been holding it down you know to receive tons of mails and direct text messages from strangers literally asking where have you been where have you been and i'm just gonna ask you where have you been <laughs> i've been cooking <laughs> uh, nah. then, I mean, I'm a better chef. I don't know. <laughs> but then, um, I would say uh, it's amazing. And, you know, um, she's been behind the scenes and, you know, I've watched her, you know, just dedicated her time to, you know, just growing and just overcoming the past season and just working with the pace of this new season and, She's put out a lot of resources together to grow and just, I can't wait for you guys, man, to really see what she's about and they're nearly being impacted by the wealth of like knowledge and just what she had acquired over time, just studying and just preparing herself for a time like that. Oh, thank you. That's very kind of you. Thank you. And I will also leave you at for later and say thank you as well for pushing me. Um, yeah. I was sharing that I have recently put out a video on YouTube, not on YouTube, sorry, on my Instagram. Um, and that video was done randomly, one of our works that we did. He just said, the sign come, say something to the camera. And in five minutes, I said something valuable, apparently, <laughs> out of the blues. And it's also a product of what I've been feeding my mind with. Mm. And he's, he's been my major influence since we got married, of course. Um, and... Part of his influence in my life is making me read more books. And all the things I shared were based on the books I've also read. So all the things you also listen to today. And even just recording that moment itself, just being able to go back in time and see how I was able to, my thought process was just some months ago. It's also very beautiful to see. And thanks to you for pushing me to read and pushing me to also say something, right? Um, I think ultimately, thanks to God. And uh, I'm so glad because you are... Uh, just this morning, you were showing me uh, different messages that different, like, literally people were writing episode. <laughs> you know, saying how what my wife was communicating was resonating to them and they, like, screen recorded it and, you know, 
they are going to make a positive change on their life based on what she's saying. And mm -hmm. it's so amazing to see. It's humbling, most importantly, to see. And I wouldn't, it was just our, like, on a, um, you know, our private video. You just decided yeah. to share it. Yeah. You know, I'm so super, super thankful for you guys who really love us so much and find that really valuable that whatever she says really resonates with you guys. It's really just so humbling to see. Thank God. Thank you. Thank you as well. Um, yeah, yeah. So we're just going to go straight into it. And today we're going to be focusing on a couple of um, sub topics. And the major topic is couple finance, of course. I would ask my husband and then a question on um, mindset. Mm. Because again, this podcast is focused on mindset so well. And I will go into some facts on today's topics on couple finance. And I will go into some other quotes on money generally. And then we'll go into how to manage wealth as a couple. And then we end the episode. Okay? So let's go. Now, the first thing here that I read was um, a quote saying, being rich or being poor is essentially a state of mind. What do you think? Oh, that's very interesting. And as literally as it sounds, that's the truth. Mm -hmm. um, because um, it all starts from your mind. Everything that exists around us was a product of someone's imagination. Mm -hmm. So uh, unfortunately, the popular culture, you know, uh, misinterpret or misappropriate what riches really means. They affiliated with um, material, you know, possessions. Um, I would like to say those are just a byproduct of a rich mind, right? And, um, it, you know, being rich is a product of the mind. And riches is just ability to subject your mind to creative thinking in such a way that you can generate something valuable to the marketplace out of nothing. So, yes, absolutely, I agree with that. Being rich is a product of the mind. Yeah, I agree with that as well. And the reason why I say that is... Um we are where we are right now based on choices we made. Absolutely. And that's also what I also shared on my Instagram. If you haven't, or if you're not following on Instagram, I advise you to go to that on Deep Isayo. Everywhere Deep Isayo. Um, Instagram is Deep Isayo. Twitter is Deep Isayo. Or X is Deep Isayo. Uh, so yeah, just coming back to the subject line on being rich or being poor is essentially a state of mind. I say that you, you're a product of the choices you make because... Mm. You being poor today, you might blame it on the economy. You might blame it on time. Like, oh, it's only time for me. I say it's a choice. Um, and the reason why I say it's a choice is uh, you, my, myself and my husband, we made a choice to say, oh, do you want to come to Canada? Ever since, my, my, my mommy always said something to me. I was like, I'm 18 years old, though. Your life is a product of the choices you make. So that line itself already rang into my head. So I had a decision to say, okay, am I going to be um, with this particular person at this particular time? Because I don't know if I'm at, at this particular place, you know, being at the wrong place at the wrong time, I could, you know, be a victim of something I don't know. Yeah. I just know what to be a victim of. Yeah. It goes back to the same mindset of being rich or being poor is essentially a state of mind. Before we started this episode, myself and my husband were listening to somebody and me speaking on mindsets and speaking on being wealthy or being rich mm -hmm. and... We also um, read a particular Bible verse two, two or three days ago or yesterday. Yeah. How it says, as a man takes in his heart, so is he. Which goes back to what we're saying right now. Also, which also goes back to the somebody Amy message we're listening to. See, so, somebody Amy's focus line or line of thought was in regards to um, money is an exchange of value. Mm. And I know most people, they say that they are rich, which they are focusing on how much money they have in their account. So he's saying money is an exchange of value and the true wealth is in your mind, is in your ideas, is in your thoughts. And let me explain what that means. Um, right now, I'm still on a couch. Mm -hmm. And this couch is an invention of someone that thought, I said, okay, I want to create something that will be so comfortable for you. humans like me to sit down and have a discussion yeah. with friends. Yeah. They went the extra mile to document their invention, share it with people and get collaborators to bring their ideas to life and they put value on it and sell it to you and I. And with that, ex that, that, you know, value being exchanged for money is what makes them richer. Like yeah. it's what brings the money into their pockets. Yeah. But that money coming into their pockets was as a result of ideas. Yeah. And the idea came 
from the mind. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, ultimately, when you study every one who have mastered wealth, even from our own personal experiences, one thing I've come to realize is that the principle are all the same in different forms, right? It's very simple. Position your mind frame to be in uh, a creative environment, an enabling environment, so that you can be able to generate ideas, not just ideas, but yeah. ideas that are relevant to the marketplace. Yeah. Yes. And when you generate those ideas that are relevant to the marketplace, you create it out, right? You, Of course, you must have courage for creation, taking action. You create it, you release it into the marketplace with a, put a price tag on it and you're good. Yeah. The concept is quite easy, but you know, unfortunately as humans, we don't really like the easy thing. We think, um, you know, wealth creation is just this complex charade of, you know, activities and everything. But you know, when it's all said and done, wealth is a product. Being wealthy is a mind state. Right, being poor is a mind state. Most people are broke, but they are not poor. Right, being broke means you do not have that financial uh, strength yet, but that does not change the fact that mentally you have a capacity. capacity to produce it and you are rich mentally. Everything that happens physically manifests mentally first, right? So, it life is lived inside out, right? It becomes a reality from within and, you know, it manifests um, into reality. So that's how I see it. Yeah, I'm just going to say a little bit so that in regards to people who believe that, okay, I don't have the resources, I don't have financial resources at this point. Um, these are people that will classify themselves as poor, right? But I can challenge you to think to yourself that you are not poor. Um, you, you're you just a reflection of your environment and all you have to do is change your environment. Yeah. Um, you have to be intentional and... You, you just do a quick reality check. Where am I now? Is this an environment that reflects what I want to achieve in the future? So you have to decide where you want to be in the future. Yes. So you say, if if being in Canada is not a reflection of where I want to be, how about you change your position? If being in Nigeria is not... <laughs> fine, you might say it's too expensive to leave Nigeria. Let's start from maybe a city that you're in. If being in this city is not bringing the opportunities I need, where are the opportunities... That's why a lot of people come to Lagos, for instance, to look for opportunities, right? Yeah. And that's what, telling your environment. Secondly, mm -hmm. is the books you read. So that will expand your mind to help you generate ideas and thoughts. Mm -hmm. There's a book that I've read called Ideas Rule the World by somebody. I mean, books like that too help you think critically on, you know, generating good ideas that, you know, you can just all of a sudden become an inventor that would, you know, come up with the next best thing after Facebook or after, you know, YouTube or Instagram and all of yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, yes, um, I'll, I'll take it off from there to say, you know, there are some people that are going to watch right now that are going to hug you that, you know, oh, it's because she's on a better, you know, she has a better life and, you know, that's why it's easy for her to give, mm -hmm. they, they will even refer it as a motivation, you know, in a very condescending manner, right? Um, I would like to challenge those set of people to say something. Yes, uh, I will argue with you that you are not poor, you're broke. Um, because everyone that you've seen, majority of the people uh, in the marketplace that you've seen that has created something substantial, value and impact and by the reward where the marketplace will always reward you for creating value. And by the reward, they have been able to accumulate a lot of money. Most of them, they really start rich. And I would challenge you to say, you need to start with defining how you think. You know, it goes back to self images at first, right? If you think, the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. Mm -hmm. So if you think you are poor, that would be your reality. But you need to start thinking outside of your situation. Mm -hmm. Yes, it may not be there physically right now, but how can you create that reality mm -hmm. and you can bring it to life, right? How can you start to think big, think to being a solution? Because the marketplace, again, we always reward people who create solutions to problems. This podcast is proudly sponsored by Swing Trade FX Academy, a leading platform designed to help aspiring traders become more profitable, just like its founder. Forex trading is a powerful tool for achieving financial freedom and building sustainable wealth, which is why I'm so excited to share this opportunity with you. Swing Trade FX has transformed the lives of many, as reflected on the glowing testimonials on their website. My husband, the founder, is a living testament of the effectiveness of the principles and strategies he teaches. Strategies that are also successfully applied in the stock market. 
recently issued how to turn $100 to 11000 showing that what body traders truly need to succeed in Forex is the Forex trading skill, not more capital. If you are ready to start your trading journey or take your trading journey to the next level, visit www.swingtradefxacademy.com to enroll in one of their courses today. Enjoy the episode. Right. And it's very easy. You don't have to start from, you don't have to come from a world they all, most of us did. You know, you don't have to be, you don't have to come up from money. Most people give the excuse that the reason why they are uh, broke, uh, are poor is because of money. I would say the reason why you are where you are is because you have not contributed anything to the marketplace. The market is always fair. The principle that governs this universe is fair. If you bring anything valuable, regardless of how minute it might be, as long as it solves a problem and there are demand from it, trust me, you can put your price tag on it and you can be able to get the money you seek as a byproduct. So you have to start thinking. You have to start creating a mental environment that allows for creativity, right? You know, I love to... In, in our private time where we talk, you know, there's this very beautiful quote I, I, uh, I love to say that the language of the heart is your thoughts, right? Whatever you think is what will be manufactured in your heart. And the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So out of the abundance of what is in your heart is what you're going to manifest. It defines your attitude. It defines your self-image, your self-esteem, your self-efficacy. So I would like to just put it out there for people that might want to come for one of and say. Yes, you will be thank you. Um, for those who are listening from Spotify and Apple Podcasts that are not Nigerians or not Yorubas, um, I think SGH means thank you. I would also be putting translation on YouTube. So it's, it would be good for you to go watch the video on YouTube as well. So thank you very much, baby. Um, yeah, the next thing is a quote I saw on a show that says a lot of couples avoid talking to each other about money because they do not know how. Mm. But for both of us, it's been very easy. And I say thanks to you, Ring, for, to God. for a lot of that. Um, because you brought up a lot of the money conversations we had. It's a lot of conversations you actually brought up because you're very proactive. And uh, one of which was the money conversation. So how did you make that happen? Um, first of all, thanks to God, who is the fountain of all knowledge. Um, and secondly, uh, I like to I have a very strong philosophy, which you know about that. Don't just coast through life living in an, uh, autopilot mode, but, um, allow yourself to be an observer of your own journey and perhaps the journey of others. Right. And you learn in two ways in life. You either learn by experience or you learn by revelation. Uh, experience might cost you your life, your time, <laughs> many resources that you may never have to come back from but when you learn from um through the lens of revelation you are able to you know be discerning and see different people and their how their life turn out and be able to go introspect on why are they the way they are and you can be able to see clearly uh that there are patterns people don't just arrive at where they had in life their product of choices and decisions being made so when I kind of look around and look at people and society, people I know, perhaps you, even some some I do not know, you kind of see the product and the outcome of the family structure and there's something all, that is always embedded, you know, at the core of it, right? Um, of course, to some, <laughs> there are different issues, right? But I picked the interest in family finance. And I realized that the traditional way of handling family finance is so stressful and it stresses marriages out, right? Yeah. Um, in a situation whereby a man is driven by ego and he just wants to like be in charge of everything because God has given him the grace. Yes, that's cool. But transparency in your finance, it helps and opens room for proper planning, mm -hmm. proper conversation. And it opens room for objectivity in a marriage. What do I mean by objectivity? If the family uh, finance is transparent enough, then that means there will not be unnecessary expectations by the family, by, you know, 
it's been communicated between the husband and wife and you know there will now be a way to communicate to the children that okay this is what we are not expecting now why because of this sometimes it's not even because you don't have it but because your priorities maybe you are looking to the direction of investing into certain things then you are practicing delayed gratification together as a partner but in a situation where my finance you know, you're oblivious to my finance. You don't know what it is. I don't know what yours is, but you, the expectations of me to continuously provide or the contribute, uh, all the, you know, expectations on you also that, oh, you got to do something. There's a disconnect right there. And it always leads to argument because the wife will feel like, oh, it's, it doesn't want to provide. The husband feel like you're not understanding. I'm under pressure. So the best way are just a simple thing why not we come together if we agree that we are one regardless of how much how big how much millions we're making let's talk about it we can always do better when we are both aware of our financial situations as a family right than when i'm just having an individual approach to my finance and you having individual approach of your finance so that's how i say it yeah, I, I buy into that idea and I'm really thankful to you for also being open, to be honest. It has helped us overcome a lot of hurdles that a lot of mm. people are currently facing. Mm -hmm. um, I, I feel like I know the answer to this question, but it's why do people not have these conversations? Why do couples stray from those mm. conversations? Yeah, it's very interesting because it goes back into how we were raised as people. You know, we naturally, nobody likes to have conversations about money. Because there's a component of money that is directly attached to our emotions, right? So some people would rather want to live in denial than just to face the reality and do something about it. So by the innate nature of us as human, right? We actually shy away for things that keeps us accountable. And one of the things that regardless of how long you run that we all this account for itself is your personal finance right so the reason why people find it hard is uh, it just goes back to how we were raised you know you want to talk up you don't even talk about finance to your parent or perhaps you've not even seen your parent talk about finance or people you have looked up to in life you've never seen them talk about their personal finance we just know this person is rich we just know this person is poor right so we, we take that in and it's really reflecting how we see money, right? And, you know, you know, coming back to finance or anything, right? Um, you know, I'm the type of person that I just believe when money's in the bank, we're good. Yes, I'm not really a lousy spender, but I do not really take time to actually uh, uh, um, give, uh, keep myself accountable for my finance. My focus is just make more money. You you're good. You know, as long as I I can still. Which is where I come in, and I'm gonna get to that. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, you're gonna see like um um my account, and as long as it's fine, right? But then when I start to pay attention to people, when I start to pay attention that these things are so subtle because it accumulates over time until you end up being broke, right? I really realized I needed to make a change and, you know, thank God for you. You've been able to, my wife is, I'll say this, she's the master organizer. Like, li listen, if there's any ministry in any government in the world called ministry of organization, they should hire, you. Fisari, you know, and yeah, that's how I say people avoid money talks because it makes them feel comfortable. And the nature of human is that we would rather shy away from things that we need to speak about, though they are uncomfortable, than speak about them. So it's just lack of accountability. Thank you. Yeah. And I was just thinking to myself that I'm so happy and blessed that you were able to have this conversation in regards to what you heard, what I heard, how we can plan, because it helps us with our future goals as well. Yeah. It will delay us, it will take us back. It will slow down the growth of this whole mm -hmm. if we're not on the same page. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a it's a big win for the both of us, and I thank you yeah. for that. I thank you for everything. You know, I see a home as a government. Literally, is the is the most is the smallest part of a society. So it's a government on its own. So if the on a macro level, if the government have 
what we call Ministry of Budgeting and Planning and Finance. You know, and every company has a budgeting department and accounting department. And the family is just on a, at the micro level what the macro government represents. I think uh, every family requires to have a system built around family finance and, you know, spending. So I'm just thinking of my next question here that focuses on what money is like before, like how to, as couples, how to undo or discuss money before marriage and, and, and during marriage, not after marriage. It's not, it's not like after <laughs> during marriage. <laughs> during marriage. So, uh, and I'm just reminded of our journey as well, how we actually started planning financially together while we were still dating. I felt like the only difference is that we're not married because all the things we do now is what we were doing before because we, already, we had a vision already that we're going to get married and this is how we're going to, like, this is what we're going to need. Mm -hmm. So to be financially aware of this economic situation in this area mm -hmm. this is how we should plan this is what we should earn this is what we should save this is how this is what we should you know be looking at so that helped us while we were still single uh -huh. um to work together as a team i know now when you get married say so you're now one so essentially what you plan finance as one because we have a pool of funds of a financial a family how do they usually call it is it combined income, family income? Mm -hmm. We have that, and we're able to say, okay, this is what we're using it for. We that we started that while we were still dating, mm -hmm. which is a wisdom from your part, and I thank God for that. Okay. Right? So I'm saying that to people listening now that that can also help for couples looking to get married. Um, and why? It's not compulsory, but why? Because it helps you grow faster. It helps you be on the same page. Um. Um, yeah, like I'm trying to think of all that reasons, but that is like, yeah, so I, I think it, it goes back into vision as well. You see, um, most people don't like to say, it, but, um, having proper financial security mm -hmm. really takes away certain stress and it helps you to focus on what matters, right? Mm -hmm. And as a family, life doesn't stop after marriage. In fact, a new, um, yeah, during marriage, sorry. And yeah a, a new life a new season only just starts right and uh, you know when you look at the uh, at data of you know the top three reasons why most marriages fail and ends you know ruins you know people's life um you know from a grand consensus we will see that finance is one of it mm -hmm. people don't communicate finance in fact some people even go as much as lying about their finance to someone you want to get married to and you know the reality becomes different after the marriage and now oh uh, it puts a strain on the purpose the vision as the destiny of you know where whichever part of you know the you know visionary person like in the marriage right so talking about finance is really so necessary because it's it allows you to have combined you know focus and approach to life you can be able to plan better you can be able to further your dream because you've been able to have a structure and system built around your finance and i think the most important thing is it doesn't put stress on nobody so that's all i'll say about that thank you very much for that i was going to ask it as your wife what would you see my money culture is like and how would you describe my money habits you kind of shared a bit of that earlier <laughs> Yeah, uh, I would say I'm grateful to God because you are first a planner. And so if you, you go into it like your workstation and you, you know, do all those budgeting and you piece it out together and, you know, the budget is not budgeting, you will not encourage us to carry on on any project. Yeah. And uh, I would say your financial, um, your happy towards money is you're more conservative, you know, um, in, the, um, in finance, they call it, you are more risk averse, mm -hmm. right? That means you, you know, you're very careful mm -hmm. with money and I think it's good, you know, um, um, pretty much you're way more careful with money than I am. Yeah. Thank you. What would you say mine is? What would I say yours is? Um, you actually said it earlier when you said that you are more focused on earning, 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 and 
Yeah. You're focused on saving, saving, saving. <laughs> on, and, and save, save, save. Yes. yes. So where you earn, and earn, and then we save together, invest, and put it into the right vehicles to help us generate more wealth, which we would focus more in this podcast, vehicle for wealth generation, how to save, the percentage to save. Which I'm going to get in, a little into that today. Just a quick thought here. Did you know that there's a difference between being rich and being wealthy? Yeah. Tell me your definition. I'll tell you what I what I have seen. Yeah. So um, anyone can be rich, but not everyone can be wealthy. You know, uh, riches have a lot to. They are both similar. The only difference is that being wealthy, you have system in place that you know whatever system you build can outlive you, right? That's what I consider wealth, where you've built uh, a system around your finance, your value place to the marketplace. But being rich, you know, there are, yes, you have the money, but not necessarily systems around it. So you could be rich and you could be broke, but you know, it's hard to see someone who's wealthy, you know, with those systems in place, mm-hmm. you just get back. So yeah. it's more about systemizing your sources of, you know, valuation yeah. and income. Yeah. What you said something just that uh, you can, it's at to this no is wealthy. And that's something I've been seeing most of this wealth creation books and videos and um, messages I've been listening to. So I'm just going to read out to you the definition I've seen here. Mm-hmm. So a rich person is very easy to discover. And what are their characteristics? They have high salary, but they also spend high. Right? So you would see them with the latest Lamborghini. You see them the latest um, wristwatch. You'll see them the latest of everything. Right? So outwardly, they look rich. But guess what? In their bank accounts, they could have zero. They could have $4. Because, you know, we were listening, literally watching someone the other day that outwardly this lady is actually rich because she has money coming in every month. But as the money is coming in, it's going out. So she has no plan. This is what we're getting to the wealthy person. Wealth is usually hidden, which is where you like. Sometimes you label with wealthy. Um, wealth is usually hidden. Wealthy people have assets, investments, properties, and businesses. So they tend to, of course, they, they can spend, but it's always advisable not to spend above your means but within your means or if sometimes it will below your means mm-hmm. and these people are wise enough to put their um the net income that's after they've taken away their expenses into savings or into investment vehicles for wealth generation so i would just say the key characteristic of a rich person is that they are flamboyant in nature well the people are non flamboyant in nature yeah yeah i think most people confuses um being wealthy from being rich um, it, it, uh, it's such an irony that the the person that claims to be rich is doing everything to be seen as rich, while the person that claims to, um, right. the real wealthy person right. is doing everything not to appear rich. Yeah. And it goes back into our psychology, right? Just like we said in the beginning, people, you know, um, affiliate, um, you know, being rich with material possession. Right. You know, so there has to be a change of that, you know, way of thinking. We have to see wealth through the lens, which it is by itself. Uh, wealth is simple, you know. You have a means of income. You create a product. You know, you you put your skill out in the marketplace. You're able to create value in any way or form, whether through your talent, through the product you're creating, through the service you're rendering. An ability to build a system around it in such a way that it can outlive you, in and in such a way that it, there's so much scalability, you know, with respect to it, where you can be able to replicate this model in the U.S. You can replicate it in London. You can replicate it in Africa, in Nigeria, in Egypt. You can replicate it anywhere because it, all you have to do is just copy the system and paste it, with respect to how the economy works over there. That is what we call wealth. So. And when you talk about what wealth looks like, wealth is more silent, um, riches are more, you know, flamboyant, right? And so when we look at both of them from the lens of what it looks like, then we can speak to that. But when we look at them from what it really is, being rich, you can, anyone can be rich, to be honest. You can hit a jackpot, you can, you know, you can start to play at the NBA today and make a lot of money, but how many of these athletes were able to maintain that money? And even if they're able to maintain it, how many of them was able to turn into a generational wealth, right? So wealth has the 
ability or the tendencies of going beyond just you outliving you and you know the system can be copied into the next generation and be modified and be passed to the next generation thank you so if you're taking notes whatever you're listening or you're watching um also write down that wealth is where your asset exceeds your liabilities absolutely Right. If you don't know what liabilities are, maybe you should tune into the next episode. Maybe we will speak more on that, <laughs> or you can easily just Google as well. Right. I want you to. So like, the idea of this podcast is for you to be uh, financially informed, be financially literate. I was telling my husband that I, I realized that my passion, of course, as as metamorphosized over time, at the time of my life, I was more passionate about other things. Now I'm really passionate about seeing people becoming um, financially empowered. Mm. I realized that our curriculums in school do not really teach us the nitty gritties of what we actually need to grow wealth. Yes. And that Please. is why I have, yeah, that's why I've also desired to say, okay, I'm going to write on my podcast, um, write on my blog, share videos on my YouTube and share audios on like my podcast to empower people. So I'm going to be sharing more empowering content for financial interests. Sorry, what was the thing? Yeah, I was going to say the traditional school system was created um to harvest you know employees into the marketplace so they would literally not even the top business schools when you go through their curriculum is more about business management how to manage business how to be an entrepreneur not entrepreneur right how to manage businesses and everything but the school of life you know teaches you to create value because the moment you start to get into the marketplace of life you realize that the marketplace function on a lifeline the lifeline is called values right yeah. so you are able to think in terms of value creation okay, they can you them. know and uh, you are able to you know convert that and put a price tag on it and you know just make sense with your life whenever i listen to my husband talk i was like you should write a book because it's always it's always dropping gems so your book is coming thank you it's coming soon all right so we've, we've spoken about a lot of things we'll be ending the podcast soon I'm just going to give you a few things I think we are doing right. And of course, some other things that we can also employ. But mm -hmm. based on that, I've also researched as well. I'm constantly learning. We are constantly learning. Bill Gates is constantly learning. Warren Buffett is constantly I was used to his thing to a um, podcast recently on how Warren Buffett made became a mortal billionaire at age 65. Mm -hmm. That if he had retired at age 65, with the typical age of retirement, mm -hmm. It would not have become the millionaire that he is today. Mm. So he is contrary, constantly rather putting in work to see what he can do better. And that is what helps you grow. Mm -hmm. The key to growth is constant learn, learning rather. So um, amongst all the notes you have taken today, I want you to also take down that you should have a goal if you don't already have a financial goal. Um, financial goal for you and your husband. I'm just guessing that people watching today are husband and wife, so looking to be husband and wife soon. You were sing singles, right? Yeah. Um, a financial literacy is not a feature yeah, of marital I, status. I agree. I say that because this, this episode is couple fight. Oh, I feel like this will appeal to a lot of couples. Ah, okay. But of course, it's open to, I mean, I'm sure some singles will also be listening to this as well. Um, have as a couple your financial goal, communicate that with each other. Mm. Where do you want to be in the next one year financially? Where are the places you want us to travel? Travel is dependent on money. You know, what kind of education do you want to have? Do you want to have a doctorate? Do you want to have a master's? Mm. Financially, what does that look like? Is that part of a financial goal right now? Mm -hmm. And whenever your paycheck comes in, there's a rule of thumb I am developing actually for those who will be <laughs> subscribing to the pisara does come i'll just share a bit of it here though um which is when the money comes in for the money comes in anyway you budget um have the mindset of spending below your her name yeah and the way to do that is the formula i'm creating anyways is that um an average of 50 to 60 percent will be used on your expenses the major expense you have in the month is your rent mm -hmm. and then your car if you have a car and food then other things comes so i don't know what kind of bills you have but 50 to 60 percent now that you have a joint income not just your income can be put to spending and then 
thirty percent savings, then we have. So if we're working with sixty percent, then we have an extra ten percent. Ten percent can be investment. Now your investment can be divided into. Well, I'm investing into education. So out of that ten percent, I can say five percent for this month. I want to l- go for this conference. This conference is going to cost me five thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah. I'm going to go for that conference or investing into all this. Um, stocks, bonds, and all of that, which we're going to discuss later. Now, the savings where you're doing 30% can be divided into your emergency savings fund. And all that future plan. So your travel itself is a goal that you might have decided you wanted to do. Yeah. Well, it's not just one pool of funds you're going to put into the travel. You save systematically towards yeah. it. So again, have a goal, short-term, long-term goal. Budget before your money comes. Spend below your means. 50 to 60 percent for your fixed spendings or your fixed cost then 30 percent for savings again this is something that can be worked around based on your own financial situation you know what works for you mm. myself and my husband are constantly changing things based on what works for us at the moment right um yeah is there anything you want to share with people to yeah um i'm gonna say in the grand scheme of things um as a family you have to have a collective vision, a, jo- a, a joint vision that drives the family. A family without a vision is going nowhere, right? And um, what um, you, you might want to be going, going, going in life. You don't want to live life on autopilot, right? Um, you want to be able to have a vision. And, you know, one core part of any family vision is finance, right? You want to be able to create secure uh, uh, financial security around you know, your own and all of that. And for you to be able to do that was the vision of what you want for your family as couples, not just one person. You know, it takes it, it takes two people to agree, right? So two must agree and they must become one. So once the vision is clear, then you can be able to plant a goal around the vision. Now, it doesn't stop at goals, right? If you have a goal and your action is not in congruent with your goal, that's just wishful thinking, okay? So once the goal is set, then there have to be a plan. The plan is what will power the goal to be achieved, right? And once the plan is laid down, the two sides swing into action. And as simple as this can be, um, it could be hard to do. You know, it can be hard. It can be hard to achieve if there's no agreement. So it starts from agreement. Agreement conceived vision, right? Once vision is clear, then a goal can be planted. And after the goal has been planted, mm-hmm. plans then go around it, and both can now swing into action. What happens is when you start to take action now. Now you are taking action with a purpose, with a direction, mm-hmm. and you know. um what qualifies, you know, speed is direction, right? Mm. So when you don't have a direction, you are just going, you, you don't know where you're going to. So as a family, it's very, very imperative that finance has been discussed, a goal has been planted, a plan is created, you know, and most importantly, action, discipline to take action and the courage to take action, right? Yeah, and that th- part. That is very important for yeah, it depends to take action because I was reading and listening to, I think it was Jim Rohn, that said people do not believe in themselves. That's why they mm-hmm. do have to take action. So yeah. we need to work on self-belief, which I'm going to hand with today. But before I go into that, I want to um, remind you that in the midst of planning, in the midst of taking action, be consistent. Every week we try to review our plan. Okay, how much did we spend this week? Oh, let's go back to that, our Excel sheet. How much did we spend this week? Are we overspending? Are we not overspending? Or what do we need to do better? Because we're constantly trying to grow. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to end with this. It's a quote by Aristotle and others. <laughs> Generational poverty is not about money. It is about mindset. Yeah. You are as rich as your mindset. You are not. You are what you repeatedly do. Excellence is not an act. It is an habit. Mm. Then somebody else said. I did not get the person's name, sorry. <laughs> resources and people connected to this thought. Sorry, resources and people are connected to your thoughts. Mm. Probe your belief system. Mm. So going back to the fact that generational poverty is not about money, it's about mindset. Probe why you think the way you think. Mm-hmm. Um, 
the resources, so these people can be resources, book you really can be resources. They also are connected to how you think. So probe that as well. Probe what you read, probe what you listen to, probe your probe your environment, which goes back to all that we discussed at the beginning. Yeah, and that is the food for thought I'm going to be leaving you with today. If my husband has anything else to say, please feel free to share. <laughs> um, I would say that um, to um, put a crown to that, um, I agree with that last statement, last quote, which is so profound. You must be able to think about what you think about. Mm. Yes, critical thinking is the most valuable skill in the marketplace. Ability to question and humility to admit that your belief and philosophy are wrong and change it for the better. So may God bless you. Thank you guys for watching and thank you for supporting my wife. And she's off to great stuff with the oh, uh, thank podcast you. and brand. And I can't wait for you guys to say God bless you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. So it's one minute. 30 seconds less to the end of this podcast. And I want to say thank you once again for joining. If you're listening, thank you, thank you. Don't forget to subscribe to our Spotify, Apple, and YouTube, wherever it is you're watching on, on the, on like listening to us or watching from. Feel free to subscribe, like, and make sure you do share. I'm sure we've shared it with a valuable insight. I have learned, even been here, I'm sure you must have learned listening to us. So share, subscribe, and stay tuned for the next episode. Till next time, don't forget to stay awesome, stay inspired. Peace.